Today's episode is going to be about multi-level marketing. Some people did multi-level marketing back in the 70s, 80s, maybe 60s. They were probably called different names. We got it fancy now. We kind of they probably changed the name again. But I mean, when I was coming up, we call it multi-level marketing. Everybody wants to make more money. And um, when I was coming up, I loved those things. I loved the get rich quick schemes. The first one I ever seen, it was called Don Lupri. Don Lupri was this dude, and he basically was like selling, not selling, but he was trying to get you to put ads in a newspaper and sell like furniture, used furniture, kind of like how Facebook Marketplace is now. But he was doing it with like newspaper ads and he would have products for you to sell and you just basically pay for the ad and newspapers, little tiny ads. And you will sell stuff through these ads, call up the number, sell the stuff and that's it. And you do that, you know, 50 times in the newspaper, supposedly you will make money by doing that. And then he said he had like, you can get, um your own 900 number. Remember like those sex channels, dating t dating things, um, the psychic friends network, like he would have that stuff and he would set you up. This is what he looked like. I don't know if you can see that. Don Lupri. Ah. He was like really like, really sh like when he, he came out, he was talking that crap. Is that good in there? Yeah, Don Lupri. You Google him. You can do your Googles. But Don Lupri was an American multi-level marketing, that's what we're talking about, infomercial. That's what we're doing. His work involved products such as the greatest vitamin in the world. That was later on. When I first started, it was making money secrets. Don Lupri was criticized as selling questionable business plans that often did not work for his clients. Well, guess what? It didn't work for me neither. But... He, he souped me up. He was like the gurus of like, you see him on the internet where everybody's like, somebody's driving like a fancy Lamborghini or Ferrari. And they're like, how would you like to make all this money? I, I, take, a, I take a trip to the Bahamas every year. I take five vacations every year. Um, I just bought a house. Um, what else? <laughs> I'm laughing because this shit is like, it was dope. For me, like for like 18 year old, 17 year old kid, you gotta be careful out there. Even if you're if you're listening to this, any 17 year old young teenage listen to this, you when you were like that age, we're very impressionable. Some aren't, you know, but me, I was all in it, bro. I was like, yeah, I wanna drive that Lamborghini. Cause I was broke. I ain't have no money. Um, I just wanted I wanted to be like Don Lupree. So this the um the kit, you had to pay for the kit. I mean, that's, you know, you got to spend money to make some money, right? Like, I couldn't do a podcast if I didn't buy a mic or if I didn't buy a computer, right? Like, you got to kind of, like, spend money. But I, we were, like, dead broke. And I say we because I kind of, I wanted to um go in it with one of my friends. But he had a job, so he wasn't really broke. I was broke. But I had got a job at United States. No, I'm sorry, United Parcel Service better known as UPS, and I was a loader, and it was loading trucks and unloading trucks. It was in Sea Caucus. I live in Jersey City. I was making like eight bucks an hour, part-time. That part-time felt like full-time to me because I had to take a bus and just like, it was like a 30, 40-minute bus ride going and coming, and just, it felt like a full day. I did it to pay for like my prom, and um, I did that. And I was still working there, even after the prom. And then we were like, yeah, we're going to get that stupid, um, you know, that Don Lupri thing. It was always in the back of my head. Because I'm like, yo, I can't be lifting these boxes forever and ever. I got to make some money, right? I was like, I got to make some money. Don Lupri said that I could make a lot of money if I buy this little, you know, learning kit. <laughs> Secrets. So... I told my friend, I'm like, look, let's go half on the on the kit. It was like ninety dollars. 
I put 45, you put 45. We could be like business partners. Like I was all in. He's like, all right, cool. And um, like I said, he had a job and I was still working at UPS. And then like, I was like, I send it to your house and I'll, I'll meet you over there when you get it. So he calls me like, yeah, we got the, we got the set. We got the kit come through. Right. So I get on a bus and go over there. I didn't even have a license yet. And, um, we get there. Um, oh yeah. So he's like, yeah, they came with a VHS tape and you will pop it in the VCR and you watch and he breaks, breaks it all down. It's like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm like souped up. Like, yeah, let's do it. And all of a sudden he's telling us, you know, you have to pay for ads in the newspaper. It's like $20, $30 an ad. I'm like, fuck, I don't got no money. And let me just rewind that for a second. Once once my friend told me the kit came in, I literally went to the manager and told him, like, this is my last day. I was like, I'm done because I'm thinking about Don, <laughs> Don Lupri is going to take me to money making heaven. I really did. I quit. And I was over at UPS. I was I was over it. I didn't want to do it. I was tired. I was like, this is not. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to. I just hated the place. So I quit, which was a dumb move. So I get there, and they're like, you got to spend money to make money, $30, $40. Then you got to pay for the 900 number. And the 900 number wasn't a lot of money. It was like you had to give them like 300 bucks, and he'll set you up with a number and all that stuff. And I was that was cool because I'm like, I don't got to do nothing. I just put, them, uh, put my $300. And like I wasn't, this is the, the, the scam, the money-making pyramid scam, whatever you want to call it. I was in it. And we never did it because like, I had quit my job and I needed money and I couldn't spend no money because I didn't have no money. So that that Don Lupri dream went down the drain. But it did leave an impression on me because I was like really, really like for the first time, like I was hopeful. I was like, I can do something right. I can make some money because this guy is doing it. I can do it. But no, it didn't happen. But he still it was always in the back of my head. So you fast forward, you know, um, I quit UPS, wasn't working there. Christmas time's coming around. It was like a week before Christmas and um, looking for work, right? Well, I wasn't really looking for work because I was just on some lazy shit because all summertime I was looking for a job and nobody would hire me. Nobody would give me a chance. Not one person, not one company. But in hindsight, I didn't go like... I didn't go hard for it. Pause. I didn't go like, you know, when you really like focus on something, you really go after it. I didn't go after it. I had long hair. My hair was, I had this long ponytail. It came down to like right here. And at those, at those, at that time in era, nobody was hiring like dudes with long hair. You were considered like a, like a rock and roll drug addict dude. You know, if you had tattoos and on your arm, they were like, oh, you, you, you're from the streets. We're not hiring. You had to be like clean cut. And I wasn't, I didn't want to cut my hair because I liked my hair. That was the only thing I had going for me was my long hair. So Christmas time comes around. The girl I was with at that time, she, we got the newspaper, the Jersey Journal. And I remember we were like looking for work and she's like, you got to get a job. Blah, blah, blah. Let's look around. We're just circling fucking stupid ads. And, um, I saw a little ad, like, ooh, bartender. I, I could be a bartender. I can be like Tom Cruise and flip, you know, drinks in the air and get paid a lot of money and go out with, you know, hot looking women. That was, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Something I saw on TV. That's why you got to go to school, people. You can't just watch movies all the time because their movies will fool the shit out of you. All right. So we circled the ads in the paper. There was an ad that said, um, Warehouse company looking for a toy company looking for 10 to 15 people to start immediately. Um, yeah, just call. It was like two numbers, so, you know, similar ads. Called both of them. One the guy answered the phone. And I was like, Where are you located? He's like, We're located in Newark. You come down for an interview. The other one was in Jersey City, where I lived. They were like, Yeah, come down. But this one was different. It was a chick. And she had a nice voice. And I was like, Ooh, who's that? <laughs> compared to the dude, right? But it was Jersey City anyway, so I was more than likely going to go there because I ain't got to spend no money going to North. So and that's how you say it. You say North, all right? You don't say New York. Some people say New York. I'm saying North, all right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to go check this place out. 
He's like, yeah, you got to come into the building, fill out an application, and we'll take it from there. Cool. Next day, go in. It was on Nork Avenue, 930 Nork Avenue, Jersey City. Indian Square, down the hill, warehouse, go all the way in the back. It's basically a warehouse section, industrial area. Go back there, like third or fourth floor. Smelled like paint, like printing paint. Printing. It was like a, a printing company. And um, you smell that ink. And then we go in. I say we. I keep saying we. Me. I go in. Open the door. 